so we're on the um, the last leg of your three, uh, although the, you, you've got another one as well. So I, I think we need to go to diseases, and it seems appropriate given that we're in the middle of the pandemic, although we're told it's going to get a lot better, but uh, we'll see when, when we see, I suppose. So uh, we talk about the impact of um, you know, health and disease uh, on how we understand the world that we're in and how, what it was like in history. Um, and you've written quite a lot about this. So do you want to tell us a little bit about, about the historical importance of um, illness and sickness? Thank you. Um, I, I want to break it into three parts, which mm. is how you normally look at disease. Um, but I'll start by saying that speaking now in the middle of or towards the end of COVID, um, the, the one kind of disease I didn't really deal with in my book, The Savage Wars of Peace, were, was influenza mm. and um, the kind of corona disease we're suffering from now which seems a bit odd living in the middle of this, but anyway, I didn't. <laughs> um, the other kind of disease I didn't deal with uh, was the kind that worries most people now, because what's obviously happened in the last couple of generations is that the kinds of disease that have afflicted human beings and caused all the suffering and illness of human beings have more or less been conquered in some of the world anyway, our part of the world. And so we've moved from the kinds of disease I'll talk about to diseases which are basically the body breaking down in old age kind of diseases. In other words, yeah. heart attacks and strokes and cancers. And I didn't deal with those at all. The other thing is to say why I think I became interested in disease. I think there were two reasons. One which was my generation, which was after the war. And we, young people now wouldn't realize in certainly in England and so on, the kind of disease environment that even school children in my generation in the 1950s suffered from. I and mean, we were constantly ill we had measles and mumps and um, we were covered with blotches and spots and chillblains and verrucas and God knows what. So a lot of our time at school was off sick or itching and, and with minor ailments. And I didn't really notice it that at the time, but it was precisely during the 50s, partly the National Health Service, partly uh, better food, better housing and, and heating. But a lot of these things disappeared so that by the end of my school life, 1960, and at university, the world had changed in Britain anyway, hugely. But I am aware of this sort of health revolution because like the British Empire, which I lived in the last days of, I lived in the last days of that world. And the second thing that made it very evident to me was going to Nepal because I went to a, a village in the Himalayas where there was really no cure for diseases except shamanism and traditional herbs and things like that. There was, uh, it was very remote. There was a, a missionary hospital in Pokhara about three or four hours walk away if you were quick but they didn't have many medicines and they didn't come up to the village. And so if particularly if you were pregnant as a woman or if you had uh, many, many kinds of undermining diseases, perennial diseases, coughs, colds, worm infestations, which were more or less universal, uh, goiters, all those sorts of things. So when I did get a, a doctor to come up and do a health survey in the village towards the end of my time, he found that almost everyone had some perennial disease. And of course there, if you had an accident or something hit you, you could well die of it in a way which would never happen in our society because it was difficult to get medicine. So they were what uh, one African anthropologist, Victor Turner called of African societies, disease logged. I like the metaphor, you, you have a piece of wood and it gets into water and it gets waterlogged. In other words, it's nearly all water. 
and people living until a couple of generations ago were disease logged. And so I think this helped make me interested in it. But then when I came to consider the Malthusian positive checks, war, famine and disease, it was clear that disease was the third of these. And in many ways, the much the most interesting. War is war and you can see what the causes are and what the consequences are and famine is not too difficult. Disease is very complex. And the first thing you have to understand when studying it historically is that the way you approach it will determine what you find. I found um, from someone who I liked partly because his name was similar to mine, McFarlane Burnett was his name. He was a, a famous doctor and he wrote a short book on disease in which he explained to me because I knew nothing about it, absolutely nothing. I had to learn everything, which was part of the fun. And he explained that in analyzing disease, you have to do a kind of reasoning, which uh, is analytic reasoning. That is, you go backwards down a chain of causation. You have the disease, and then you have to try and find the links that go back to what caused it. And often there are three or four or five links and this is the kind that Sherlock Holmes uses. It's the opposite of Descartes, which is synthetic reasoning, which is to reason forwards. So with biology and history, you have to use analytic reasoning. And in that kind of reasoning, the first thing you do with disease is to break it into what causes, what are the classes that afflict human beings? 